it's humorous to me every morning that the sun is at a different angle and maybe I set the umbrella up a little different or something's always seems to be slightly not quite the same and then I have these light issues and dark issues and bright issues and <laughs> it's like oh well so if you can't see me that's the way it goes <laughs> I think that sometimes we get that way, is that, you know, we're sometimes in the light, sometimes in the dark, sometimes in the shade, sometimes a little bright, sometimes a little dark. And that each and every day, you know, we pray to grow more like Jesus as we walk with him and talk with him and begin to understand what it is he's working out in us to cause us to become more like him as we've read when we study the scriptures and see the plan that God has for our lives to make us into the image of his son because he was delighted in what he saw in Jesus and Jesus did only those things that pleased his father. And so when we have a hero complex or when we want to make an idol you know, or we want to look at someone that could be our example, then we don't look at sports legends. We don't look at somebody we think that we know real close or personal or look at a leader because they're just people but we can look at Jesus who was the son of man and still is and likewise recognize that in him we move and have our being but in him we find the person that God wants to make us to be like he wants to change us to have the personality that Jesus had to become more like him, which is why we are called Christ-likeness, or Christian. That's what it means, to become Christ-like. So if you call yourself a Christian, then you're saying you're like Jesus. <laughs> Me personally, <laughs> I got a ways to go. <laughs> so in Spurgeon, as God speaks to us each and every day, the Lord our God has showed us his glory, Deuteronomy 24. God's great design in all his works is the manifestation of his own glory. Any aim less than this were unworthy of him. But how shall the glory of God be manifested to such fallen creatures as we are? Man's eye is not single. He has ever had a side glance towards his own honor and wanting to make his own glory has too high an estimate of his own powers, and so is not qualified to behold the glory of the Lord. It is clear, then, that self must stand out of the way, and that there may be room for God to be exalted instead. And this is the reason why we, why he brings his people oftentimes into various straits and difficulties that, being made conscious of their own folly and weakness, they may be fitted to behold the majesty of God when he comes forth to bring about their deliverance. He whose life is one even and smooth path will see but little of the glory of the Lord, for he has few occasions of emptying himself, and hence but little fitness for being filled with the revelation of Jesus. They who navigate little streams and shallow creeks know but little of the God of tempest and storm, but they who do business in great waters, these see his wonders in the deep. Those who step out, among the huge Atlantic waves of bereavement, poverty, temptation, and reproach, we learn the power of Jehovah. Because we feel the littleness of man, thank God then if you have been led by a rough road. It is this which has given you your experience of God's greatness and loving kindness. Your troubles have enriched you with a wealth of knowledge to be gained by no other means. Your trials have been the cleft of the rock in which Jehovah God has set you, and as he did his servant Moses, that you might behold his glory as it passed by. Praise God that you have not been left to the darkness and ignorance which continued prosperity might have involved, but that in the great fight of affliction you have been capacitated for the outshining of his glory in his wonderful dealings with you. In that respect, what Spurgeon says, and what God is revealing in it, is that if you are left alone to 
simply waddle in a crib as a baby without ever having to learn to walk, then all you would be fit for is a crib and a baby. And you would have a bottle and you would wet your diapers and you'd have people change your diapers for you. But God has intended for you to grow up and to mature and to move on with Christ, to become more like Him daily, to find out that Jesus wants you to become His chosen vessel, His purposed being in the circumstances you're in so that you could reveal Him in what you're going through. And so He brings that about through the circumstances of your day, through your life, through the trials that happen. They aren't meant to destroy you. They're meant to confirm you. They're not meant to blow you out of the water. They're meant to strengthen you and to cause you to become more dependent upon God than ever before in your life. So, if you're seeking to dodge or step aside from circumstances when God says go forward, then you're missing out on the opportunity that Jesus has given for you to mature in the way that he wants you to become, which is like him. If he has gone through, as he said, if the master has suffered persecution, shall not they which follow him do likewise? So too, in the world you shall have tribulation. That is a given. That is a fact. Nowhere and at no time has God said he would spare his people from tribulation. He said, in the world you will have tribulation. That's a guaranteed promise from God. People don't often think of that as a promise, but it is. Why? Because through your trials and tribulations, you will learn patience. And by learning patience, if you let it have its perfect work, you will become a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But if you let patience have its perfect work, then what it accomplishes in you is making you strong in the ability to know that God will bring you through it because your experience will tell you, I have been helped hitherto. Already God has done this for me. I recognize this now as a learning process, not as a challenge to wipe me out or destroy my faith. It's not the devil made me do it. It's God allowed me to go through it. That should be a new model for every Christian, I believe, in all of life. The devil didn't make me do it. God allowed me to go through it. Think about that for a while. Think that this is a learning opportunity. This is a choice. This is a decision I'm making with God to walk through the fire and not be burned. To be with him where he is so that I might be like him when he appears. That's what our goal and determination is with our faith to be allowed the privilege of standing side by side with Jesus at the end of the age, even as he's standing side by side with you today in the midst of the age. That is what I look forward to. <laughs> How about you? It don't get easy, but it will be what? Non-boring experience. <laughs>